When you're scared, you act instinctively. And my first instinct was to run away from the tavern, start hiding. It was a stupid instinct. I realize that now. somewhere across the border. I was too confused to decide anything and too jumpy to sit still. I found myself headed home. Who's that just drove in? David. It was that red mud from around the tavern. But it would have been better to leave it on my tires than to have anyone know I washed the car. such a feast we could play bridge. Can ask to board me rigid. Some men die in battle. Some go down in flames, but most men perish inch by inch in play at little games. Also women. Instead of such cultural pursuits, uh, oh, I'm not watching it. I merely have it on trouble. But if you're not listening, for heaven's sake, turn it off. But I heard David drive in. Maybe he went over to the house to see Art. Art isn't there, though. He's washing his car. David is. Ah, here's what I've been waiting for. Say, folks, do you like soup? Well, that's a silly question. Of course you do. Everybody loves soup. And wait till you taste this wonderful O'Connor soup. Made from the most succulent garden fresh vegetables, simmered to perfection in wonderful beef broth, and you've got a soup that'll really make you smack your lips. Oh, I love this part of the commercial because I get to taste that wonderful O'Connor soup. I find him irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's David now, isn't it? Yes. No one closes the door as loud or runs up the back stairs so fast. Watch. <laughs> Every time he comes into his room, it's automatic. I know, Art does it too. Well, I suppose it's a small price to pay for having two such wonderful boys. But I wish the installments weren't so frequent. If Art just wouldn't leave it running when he goes out. I have the answer to that. Add a switch install, which will cut it off from down here. It also serves to remind him when it gets sold out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's the first time that's happened. The last thing in the world I wanted to do was go downstairs. I knew Art's mother was there. But it was early, and it would look funny if I didn't. Isn't this early for David? He must have had a fight with Marcia. Or was it Louise tonight? Or Sue Farrell? The way they call him up all the time. Oh, I know. They call him over to our house when they can't get him here. Well? <laughs> That's it. Oh, dear, and I was just saying to go. Oh, oh, the jacks. oh, too many for me to count. Yeah, I'm up. Uh, how many? 180 for me. Uh, that one? Minus 50. Minus 50, yeah. Well, I hate to break up this gripping contest. Hello, everybody. But I... Hello, David. Well, hello, hello, David. David? Well, you're just in time. Here, take my hand. And you have a comfortable lead. You'll keep what I win, and you make it good if I lose? <laughs> All right, that sounds unreasonable enough. <laughs> I'll see you home, Sybil, if you're ready to go now. Oh, don't bother, Donald. Thank you. Alan and I just go back and forth through our backyards the way the boys do. Well, good night. Good night, Ellen. Good night. Good night. David. Good night. Howard. Good night, Donald. We'll see you at the office. It's my deal. Did you see Art? No. No, I didn't. What on earth were you doing washing your car? I can't even get you to hang up a suit. Well, there was some stuff on it. It looked like whitewash or paint. I didn't want it to dry. Where did it come from? Mr. Clark, are you here for Captain Ames? Well, I suppose so. I'll take it in the study. Thank you, Larry. Yes, sir. You're a fine dealer. This is the worst hand I've had all evening. 
Where are all the red threes, I wonder? Who's Captain Ames? He's a police captain, isn't he, David? Yes. I don't know, is he? What have you been up to, David? Another 60 in a 30-mile zone? Thank you. Well, yes, I'll tell him. What's your draw, Mother? Oh. Helen, can you come here a minute? I can't find my briefcase. Undoubtedly right under his nose. <laughs> Would you get me a cigarette, David? Now, what is it? Oh, Howard, if you'd only let me have Bertha tidy this place up just once in a while. Howard, what is it? Is it David again? No, no, it's Art. Ellen, he's been killed. Oh, Howard. Was it an accident? He was murdered. Uh, they found his body outside the tavern. Oh, Howard. What will Sybil do? When they called her house, the maid said she was over here. They want to see her down at headquarters. We'll have to tell her one of us. Do you want me to do it? Oh, yes, yes. I'd rather do anything than... No. It'll be better if I do. David, art's been so different lately. Do you know what it is? I don't know what you mean. Of course you do. He's so gloomy sometimes. Hates his job. Won't quit it. And I know he's been drinking more. Too much more. I better dump this. I don't want to pry, David. You know that. But if there was something I could do to help him... You'll snap out of it. David... Your father wants you to help him for a minute. All right. Don't worry, pal. Whatever it is, I'm on your side. Thanks. You want me? Your mother wanted to talk to Sybil alone. She had to tell her Art was killed tonight. Art was killed? Did you get hold of Dr. Reynolds? He'll be there. Good night, Mrs. Bradley. Good night. Good night, Inspector. Ellen's right, Sybil. It's much better for you to stay here tonight. Yes, dear. Her room's all ready, isn't it, Bertha? Oh, yes, ma'am. I put out one of your nightgowns. Well, come on, bring my bag up, please. Yes, doctor, of course. Do you have a hot water bottle? Why, well, I already filled it. It's on the bed. Will there be anything else you need, doctor? I think not. Right in here. She'll be all right. Steve will give her a sedative. She held up a lot better than I would have thought at that. Must have been a terrible ordeal for us. You had to identify him. I think I'll take a drink. I'll fix it. Thanks. Dad, did you see him? Yes. Oh, they found his knife. You remember those big pocket knives I gave you and Art first time we went hunting with the long blades that snap open? It was that one. It was open. He tried to defend himself, apparently, and wasn't able to. Or he was too late. He was hit on the head with a rock. Must have been a blow of great force. Man of unusual strength. They haven't any idea who did it. The telepart was drunk? Oh, yes. Thanks. Took a blood sample. Why, was he in the habit of fighting when he was drinking? I don't know. Thanks, I guess Good so. Keep those Some, here they are. Handy. Then give her another if she wakes up. How is she, Steve? She'll sleep all right, but I wouldn't leave her alone too long. Well, I guess I'll turn in. 
Good night, Dr. Reynolds. Mom. Dad. Be a good idea for someone to check on her now and then in case she happens to wake up. Good night. Good night, Steve. Dad hadn't noticed anything. Maybe someone who didn't know me as well, or somebody not as sharp, but not Dad. Before I told you tonight. What made you say that? The way you reacted when I told you, the way you've been behaving all evening. On edge, under pressure. I'm not asking you to tell me anything. I know you must have a good reason if you don't. It might even justify you not telling anyone at all. But I want to urge you to think about it very seriously. Understand? Yes. Only the most unusual circumstances, if any, can justify your withholding information from the police. Did you see Art tonight? I killed him. I went out to the tavern. My date had to go home early. And when I started in, Arp was coming through the parking lot alone. He was drunk. He and Vera had been quarreling. He, he called me a lot of things. He was jealous about Vera. That's the girl he was with. He, he just started swinging. I had to knock him down. I was going in and get Vera and drive them home when he... He threw that knife at me. Then he grabbed it and started. He, he'd been bad before, but never like this. He, he was going to kill me. I was scared, then I was mad. I don't remember. I, suddenly we were rolling around in the dark. I found the rock. I hit him. But I, I didn't mean to kill him. He was my best friend. I, couldn't have meant to kill him. Dad, could I? Of course not. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. No. no. Poor David. Poor unhappy heart. It's fortunate George Redmond's district attorney. He's a good man, a good friend of ours. At least he'll know you're telling the truth and consider it. You think I should tell? Well, I simply assume. Well, were you considering not telling? I, I don't know. I don't know, it just seems so. If you want my opinion, I'd say go to the police or George Redmond immediately. Whatever you do, you must decide for yourself. Of course, I have no doubt about what you'll do eventually. I guess so. I guess it's the thing to do. Okay. Don't worry, I'll see Redmond with you. Howard, David. Yes? I thought I heard you, too. What's the matter? Nothing, Mother. There is. What is it? She'll have to know. Why does she have to? It's about Art. He was killed in a fight he started with a friend. With David. Oh. 
David, David, David. It wasn't his fault. Art had a knife. He tried to kill oh, David. Oh, no, no. But they don't know who did it. Not yet. Did anybody see you? No, I, I never went inside. You washed your car. Well, there was some mud on it from out there. I just thought I'd wash it. And no one could know. No one could ever find out. And then what do you say? It wasn't his fault. Art was responsible. Why should David's life be ruined because Art got drunk? Why should he tell? What good would it do? It won't bring back Art. It won't help Sybil. But he can't ignore all responsibility for something as serious as this. Why not? You said it wasn't his fault. If it weren't for Art, it never would have happened. And if he tells, you don't know what they might do. They might even... I know George Redman. I know he'll be fair. But you don't know what they might do, do you? You can't say they wouldn't send him to prison, can you? Maybe for a long time. Maybe for life. At least let him make up his own mind about it. At least do that. He has. But why, David? Why? I know how you feel, dear. Believe me, I feel the same way. This is the only thing to do. Do you want to call Redmond now? Won't the morning be soon enough? Yes, let him sleep on it. Let him be sure. That's the gal was with him last night. I'm Vera Stone. Stone? Oh, good. Won't you just sit down? I don't think it'll be very long. Do I have any choice? I'm sure it won't be very long. You see, Arthur Bradley was... What was that again? He wasn't going to marry me. Now he's dead. What can I do about it? Well, what were you going to do about it if he hadn't been killed? Nothing. That's what I'm telling you. He wasn't going to marry me. Well, if you weren't going to do anything about it before he was killed, how do you expect to now? Yeah, that's right. How? Miss, the man for you to see is Lieutenant Royce. His office is on the floor above this. Just tell him I sent you. Oh, all right. Goodbye. Well, the screwball parade has started. Life would be dull without the lunatic fringe. Royce is going to love you for that. It'll do him good. There'll be flocks of them on this case coming in to confess everything. What do you suppose they get out of it? I never understand. Oh, good morning, Mr. Clark. Both Mr. Clarks. Won't you come in? Mr. Redmond busy? Yes, he is. Just a minute, and I'll see how long he'll be. Mr. Howard and David Clark are here. Yes. Yes. Could you wait a few minutes, gentlemen? He'll be right out. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Isn't it tragic? Poor Mrs. Bradley. Yes. Is she all right? As well as we can hope for. You weren't out there last night. I thought you might be. I looked for you. No, I... I went home early. Huh? You're lucky. I wish I hadn't been there. Yeah. Yes, sir? Uh-huh. Right. Yes, sir. Right away. Once playing with Roberts, looks like something hot. The whole night was wrong. Kept making cracks about us. About you. Asking questions. Calling me a liar when I said I hadn't seen you for months. Got so drunk I told him to go out and breathe fresh air. Didn't breathe it long. Have you told them about it? Sure, I told it all to the police last night. I don't see why I have to tell it to this individual. About us? About his being jealous? Don't be silly. Why should I? You didn't kill him. Yeah, thank you enough, Mr. Sims. You've been a great help. We'll get in touch with you. Miss Martin, will you get Mr. Sims' phone number and address, please? Oh, Howard, sorry to keep you waiting. Go on in. I thought David was with you. Oh, there you are. Good morning, David. Go right on in. I'll be with you in just a second. 
Well, goodbye, Mr. Redmond. Goodbye, sir. Thanks again. Not at all, sir. Glad to be of any assistance. I'll see you folks in just a few minutes. Should have brought a lunch. Sit down, sit down. David, how are you? Are you practicing yet? No, sir. I'm in the office this summer, but I still have another year of law school. Want to try a year or two in this office when you finish? A lot of work, no money, but wonderful experience. Well, think about it. No hurry. Howard, what's on your mind? David wanted to see you, George. Good. Anything I can do, anything at all. Oh, excuse me, Miller. Miller, be sure they get the clothes he wore last night. They've already left. Send somebody after them. That's right. Well, David, what can I do for you? Well, Art was my best friend, you know, and I... I just wondered if there... If there might be anything I could do to help. Ordinarily, it might be extremely valuable. But that gentleman who just left, the Mr. Sims, has just presented me with Art Bradley's murderer. That's right. A man named Joe Elsner. Character I'm glad to get my hands on for other reasons. He's a bookie, I know that. Maybe a fence. Yeah, I know him. I defended a partner of his a long time ago. Well, anyhow, Sims was at the tavern last night. He heard Elsner and Art Bradley have a violent quarrel. The boy owed him a lot of money. He heard Elsner tell the boy to come outside and have his brains beaten out. Apparently, poor Art was drunk enough to accept the invitation. That was just before they found his body. Car 17 reporting. Tell that man that we have Joe Elsner. Let's go. But darling, can't you understand? Art attacked him. It wasn't David's fault. That's not for us to say. If it were, then anyone who committed a crime could judge himself. If you think you should tell Redmond, go ahead. I won't even ask you not to. Of course he's not going to. All right, then forget it. It's my responsibility. You two just go on as if nothing had happened. That's right. Before long, we'll forget all about it, and everything will be just the way it used to be. Darling, don't you understand? It'll never be the same again. This isn't over now. It never will be. Why? You said yourself there was no real evidence against David. All we have to do is not say anything. What's difficult about that? It's difficult because we're the kind of people we are. We never had to hide anything. Never wanted to. Because all this goes against our deepest instincts. Now, hush. We'll go on as always. Easy and natural. Easy and natural. You understand that if Elsner is convicted... Well, of course. You don't think I'd let anything happen to an innocent man, do you? Right now, I'm not sure what I think. All right, you can still tell Redmond. David, please. I have an appointment in 20 minutes with Judge Horner. Yes, you shouldn't be late. It might look as if... I've been late in the past. No one's thought it suspicious. Easy and natural. Of course, Howard, of course, but... we mustn't be careless either, you no, know no, that. Not too careful and not too careless. Coming, David? I guess so. Bye, Mom. Be careful, David. Good morning. Good morning, Carter. Clark and Hewitt. Yes. Good morning, Howard. Donald, I'm sorry I'm late. I'll be with you in a minute. Are you ready to go? Yes, uh, but would you like me to call Judge Horner? I'm sure he'd be willing to postpone the appointment. Uh, we might as well go on. Uh, how civil? Is there anything I can do? I wonder if there's anything anybody can do to help her, really. I suppose not. Here are your appointments for the rest of the day, Mr. Clark. I completely forgot about the luncheon engagement. Meeting at the bank. I probably won't be back at all today. You'll need this at the bank. Thanks. Don't forget to tell Lee about tonight. Mr. I Clark, uh, could I speak to you a moment? I'm Mrs. Joe Elsner. Sorry, but I'm late for an appointment. If you'll speak with Miss French. What did you say your name was? Mrs. Joe Elsner. My husband is in bad trouble, Mr. Clark. They, they just arrested him, and he told me to get in touch with you right away. Well, I'm afraid there isn't anything I can do to help, but if you must see me, Miss French will make an appointment. I'm sorry, but I'm late right now. Will you excuse me? What's the soonest I can see Mr. Clark? 3.30 Friday. But that's two days. It's absolutely the first time he has free. Well, put it down. Okay.
Hello, irresistible. Hello, immovable. It was terrible about art. I'm sorry. We all are. I suppose it would be too much to expect you to put your cigarettes out or flick your ashes somewhere in the vicinity of an ash tree. Why should I? With your neurotic passion for neatness, you'll do it. Neurotic passion for neatness? Just because I don't want to wade ankle deep in cigarette butts? Oh, by the way, some of the harem call today. Let's see, it's getting so I don't even have to write them down anymore. Frances Kent called. Would I be so good as to have you call her back at home? And Louise Norman just happened to be coming downtown this morning, and she thought she might let you take her to lunch, that is, if you're free. Gwen Sterling, someone called last night, but the maid didn't get the message. And she thought it might possibly, just possibly, have been you. You haven't called her in ever so long, you know. Her number, in case you forget, is Barker, 1823. Thanks. Oh, have you got a date tonight? I thought we'd covered that subject. I don't want one. Dad said to bring you home to dinner. His hours behind schedule and loaded with stuff to dictate. Well, that's different. I don't have a date. Good, I'll drive you home after work. Don't bother. I have my own car. All right. All right. like another cup of coffee? Thank you, Larry. I'm through here now. Maybe I'll have one later. Oh, it's not real crying anymore. It's just sometimes for a minute or two, then I'm all right. Of course. I better go home. There's no need to inflict this on you. Please don't oh, go. Oh, you're sweet, but I'd better really. Howard, did David go out? No, don't He's bother. Upstairs, I don't I need think. anyone. Here it is, Mr. Clark. I didn't proof it, so you may find some typos. Mm, that's fine. Don't worry about that. Will there be any more? No, but if you wouldn't mind staying until I've had a chance to read this, just to see if what I dictated makes sense. I'll call you first thing in the morning. Good night, Howard. I'm running along. Good night, sir. Good night, Miss Pearson. Good night, Miss Bradley. I'll walk you over. Oh, thank you, David. You don't have to do that. Of course I don't. But it's all right if I want to, isn't it? Yes. Good night, dear. Good night. Why don't you come along? You look as if you could use a little exercise. I do, huh? Just in spots. It's nice to be able to walk back and forth so easily. The tennis court used to be right over there, really, half of it on each lot. It's almost like two houses on the same piece of property, in a way. Yes, and it was so much safer than having to cross streets when the boys were little. There's the North Star. I know that one because there's the dipper pointing to it. Yeah. You know, one time when Dad and I were on a hunting trip, we were camping out, and it was night. Dad had read somewhere once how to tell time by the stars, so we tried it. Do you want to sit here a while? All right. Did he do it? Yeah. But it took him about 20 minutes to figure it out. Because he had to compensate for the time of year, our latitude, and all that kind of stuff. He was doing it all in his head. But when he finally came up with the answer and looked at his watch, he was only three minutes off. Then when we got back to town, it turned out he hit it right on the nose. Because his watch was slow. I'm not surprised. He has a wonderful mind. Yeah, he should have passed some of it along to me. He did. You have a very good mind. Well, thanks. Say, this is a new experience for me. A compliment from you. Don't worry, I'm not going to join the harem. All right, they're nuts, but why aren't you two? You see, they're only interested in what you have. I demand more. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's be reasonable, at least. We're not rich, you know. A long ways from it. Honey's just a part. You have smooth manners, when you want to. Nice family. Wonderful family. Background, education, so on and so on. It's all been handed to you. Are you comfortable here, or would you like a soapbox? When you fell, there's always someone to pick you up. When you wanted something, always someone to pay for it. You take all that for granted. Never occurred to you that maybe you should do something for what you get, besides just be David Clark. See? 
I could only be interested in what you are. And you aren't anything. Do you give yourself a pep talk like that against me very often? Don't be silly. You're not that important to me. You're sweet, Lee. I'm not kidding now. You're thoughtful and smart and... Well, if you know all of that, you should know how I feel about the sly approach. What do you mean? Your arm. Am I supposed to think it's just more comfortable for you there? If you want to make passes, why don't you make them and get the question out in the open? Maybe you've got something. And that's another thing. The kiss on the neck. What pretty little ears you have. The kiss on the ears. And your rosy cheeks. The kiss. And your cute little nose. Right in the middle of your face of all places. And then the big hot surprise. The kiss on the lips. So dull. The kiss? Not necessarily. The build-up. Why not get to the point? You know, we've reached an area of agreement. Refuse to answer. Well, who are you? Mm -hmm. It's Banjo. He's Art's dog. Oh, the poor little lamb. Here, boy. Here, Banjo. Come here, baby. Come here, Banjo. He doesn't know Art isn't coming back. Maybe he's lucky not to know. Maybe. Maybe he is. Let's go in. All right. Anything more tonight, Mrs. Clark? I think not, Larry. Thank you. Is everything all right? Well, this will be fine, mate. I may make a few changes in pencil, but I won't need you anymore tonight. Thank you, sir. I'll see you in the morning, then. David, why don't you drive her home? She has her own car. It doesn't trust me. It's just that I didn't bring my brass knuckles. I'll carry your machinery now. Thanks. Good night, Mrs. Clark, and thank you very much for a lovely dinner. Good night, Lee. What is it? It was a hot rod, but it's cooled down considerably. Quite a bargain, I hope. Where's the handle? Oh, we never have handles. See? The wonders of science. Good night, Irresistible. And get some sleep, do you hear? It's been a bad day for you, I know. But it'll ease off in time. I guess. You'll never get it off the ground! Just watch! Oh, I was just going to ring. Is this the clock home? Yes, I'm David Clark. Oh, you were at the office this morning. Yeah, school. hi, Mrs. Joe Elsner. Is your father home? Well, I, I'm not sure. Please, I'll... if I could see him for just a minute. Dad, that Mrs. Elsner is here. Do you want to see her? I know I shouldn't come here, Mr. Clark, but I simply couldn't wait two days. I'm, I'm awfully sorry, but you understand. I'm afraid I don't. If I could just talk to you for a minute, Mr. Clark. What is it? We want you to defend my husband. I'm sorry, but I gave up criminal practice years ago. I know. But you could make an exception just this once. You've got to, Mr. Clark. Joe's innocent. And he always said if he was in bad trouble, he wanted you. He was a friend of Eddie Hames, Mr. Clark. The, the time you saved well, Eddie from... That was ten years ago. I, 
I appreciate your husband's opinion of my ability, but it's impossible. But Joe's a sick man, and he's counting on you. He has a heart condition, and the strain could kill him if he doesn't have you. If he's worrying if because... There are any number of lawyers in town who could defend him. But they aren't you, Mr. Clark. They aren't as good as you, and, and Joe wouldn't have faith in them. You know what they'll do to him because of the business he's in. You know what it'll be like when George Redmond starts Mrs. on him. Mrs. Elsner, it's no use. Please think it over. Mrs. Clark, you talk to him. This is not Mrs. Clark's problem. I know. I'm sorry. It's only that we... We haven't any children or anybody but each other and... And if Joe... We have money. It doesn't matter what it costs. Let me know if you want me to recommend a lawyer. You just don't care, that's all. It doesn't matter to you if an innocent man suffers. It can't touch you. You're safe. Howard, are you sure you shouldn't take the case? Yes, then we wouldn't have to worry about us being convicted. He's right, Howard. It's out of the question. For one thing, what about Sybil? What would she think? Besides, I tell you, there are any number of lawyers in town who could defend him as well as I, or better. Do you really believe that? I don't. But there's no use talking to him about it. He gave up criminal practice. I hadn't thought about Sybil. Yet, after all, it shouldn't be too difficult to explain to her. Elsner begged you to defend him. You were convinced of his innocence. After all, that's the truth. The truth? What is it? Nothing. I'm just depressed. I suppose I didn't realize quite how much my life had become centered on David. How proud I wanted to be of him. But, darling, you mustn't blame David. Really, it wasn't his fault. Maybe that's true. Maybe it wasn't at that. We're his parents. Maybe it's our fault. I think I'll go to bed. Howard, would it hurt anything if you did defend Elsner? Don't you have to be at the office tomorrow? In an hour or so? Could be. Can I ask you a question? Why is your father defending this Elsner guy? Sorry for him. Sorry? Convinced he's innocent. Dad's the old-fashioned type, against electrocuting innocent people. His heart bleeds for suffering humanity, see? Your dad's a swell person. Let's go. Go? Go where? We started home five different times and ended up in another dive each time, and they're not getting much nicer either, I might add. You don't know what you want to do. OK, OK, let's dance. She was right, of course. I was so keyed up inside, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Nothing suited me anymore. When I stayed home, I, I didn't like that either. But by the time I got around to deciding I wanted a date, all the girls anybody would want to go out with were dated already, or something. Oh, David, why'd you have to wait till the night? Oh, do you called last night? I have this perfectly wretched cold. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. I'll call you next week. So 
I'd wind up talking to myself, or as a fifth at bridge. I was always on edge, and I wasn't the only one. Mother hardly went out of the house anymore. We'd had a birthday party for her every year since I could remember. But this year, she didn't want one. It doesn't seem sensible this year. It will come right in the midst of the trial. Um, Howard will be busy and, and, and tired. You're just doing it because of me, and I wish you wouldn't. Besides, I won't even be here. Oh, then you really are going to James. Yes, Dr. Reynolds thinks I should get away for a while, so I'm visiting my sister in Honolulu. Sounds like a good idea. This bridge game isn't distracting you, ladies, is it? Oh, I'm so sorry, Howard. Is it my play? Dad could still crack jokes in spite of the fact that he hated what we were doing. But he never let it show anywhere, at home or later in court. The trial didn't seem very important at first, more or less routine. Everybody, including the judge, took it casually. There were a few mild fireworks when the state finished direct examination of his first witness, the coroner. Dad tried to outsmart Redmond and got more or less outsmarted himself but it never occurred to us that there might be any serious trouble getting Elsner acquitted. That's all. Thank you, Dr. Bell. Cross-examine. Yes, the court pleases. <clears throat> uh, Dr. Black, in testifying as to the manner and cause of Arthur Bradley's death, you stated it was from a blow upon the head by a rock or other such object. That's right. From your examination of the skull, is it possible to determine the amount of force with which the blow was struck? Within limits, yes. Could you say positively whether or not it was a blow of great force? I can say positively it was. A blow of very great force? Yes. A blow such as could have been struck only by a man of very unusual physical strength? Yes. That's all. We've all heard of the unusual strength insane people sometimes exhibit. Do otherwise normal people ever exhibit strength far out of proportion to their physique? Why, yes, they do. Can you illustrate how much beyond normal this might be? Well, women who normally would have trouble lifting 100 pounds have been known to lift something as heavy as the front end of an automobile to save a child. Are these cases rare? Oh, no. Happen all the time. In varying degrees, of course. Dr. Black, under what circumstances does this unusual strength come into play? Under stress of any sudden strong emotion, panic, fear, anger? Yes, anger. When the accused bought the cigarettes from you, do you remember what he was wearing? Well, clothes. You remember what kind of clothes? Well, a suit. Do you remember what kind of a suit? Yeah, that one right there on the desk. Did you perform the test you've just described upon this suit? I did. From these tests, can you say positively whether parts of the suit had been washed shortly before your examination or not? I can. Had they? They had. Did traces of anything still remain in those washed portions? Yes. Traces of what? Coffee, sugar, cream, and blood. Thank you. Miss Stone, you stated in your direct examination that you were with Arthur Bradley since approximately 8 o'clock on the night he was killed. Yes, sir. Continuously? Yes, sir. When you came into the tavern with Bradley, do you remember seeing the defendant, Elsner? Yes, sir. He uh, happened to be sitting at a table near us. The court pleases. I don't see where all this is getting us. Yes, sir. Uh, where is this getting us, Mr. Clark? May I assure the court and my learned opponent that I'm not questioning this witness merely for practice. All right, Mr. Clark. Now, at any time while you were with young Bradley, did Elsner threaten him? No. By a word or a look or a gesture, did he imply antagonism, latent or overt? Did he what? Could I suggest you're rephrasing the question, Mr. Clark? Uh, did Elsner seem angry with Bradley? Oh, no. Thank you, Mr. Stone. Your Honor. 
At any time during the evening, did Bradley leave your table? Uh, yes. Approximately 35 minutes after you sat down at the table? Uh, yes. Did you know where he went? Um, do I have to answer that? Answer the question, please. Well, I, uh, I didn't know positively, but uh, I guessed. You didn't accompany him? Well, of course not. <laughs> Object to this entire line of questioning. I'm merely trying to establish the fact that the witness was not with the deceased continuously from the time they entered the tavern to the time he met his death. Overruled. Gradually, the case against Elsner had built into something much stronger than seemed possible at first. But it was when the state called Sims that we began to sweat. The others had supported Redmond's case. Sims was it. Did you observe any encounter between Art Bradley and the accused that night? Yes, sir, I did. Will you describe this encounter in your own words? Well, I was en route from my table to the washroom. It's at the end of a passage, and I was about to turn into this passage as I saw young Bradley coming along it towards me. I paused to let him pass. At this moment, a man whom I later learned was uh, Elsnor came up from the other direction and spoke to Bradley. With the deepest sarcasm, Elsnor said he hoped Bradley was enjoying himself since it was on his money and he'd hate to see it wasted. He said Bradley could not well him and get away with it. Sounds coached. Somewhat yes, I didn't Actually, think I Redmond would do that. Them. And by this time I had Maybe he didn't. So. However, I could hear Elsnor as he continued quite distinctly up to the time I went into the washroom. Elsner's tone was so menacing that his exact words stuck in my mind. They were, either I get the money you owe me or come outside and get your brains beat out. When I returned to my table presently, Bradley was nowhere to be seen and Elsner was at the table with his wife. She seemed to be trying to stop him from doing something. A moment later, he rose and left the table in the room. And then, at a period of time I should judge to be less than 10 minutes, he returned. He seemed very upset this time, and almost immediately, he and his wife left. Well, shortly after, I should say between five and ten minutes, the lifeless body of young Bradley was discovered. Thank you. Your witness. Mr. Sims, I believe you said you moved here from New Bedford, Massachusetts about five years ago. Yes, sir. We moved out here after I retired. I see. How long had you lived there before that? Nineteen years, sir. I had a machine tool factory there. And all this time you lived there under the name of Henry Archer Sims? Why, certainly, sir. I... Objection! Your Honor, the state objects to this question. Is the question, that's all. There'll be a recess until 1.30. I admonish the jury not to discuss this case with each other or anyone else during adjournment. So you and Grace haven't forgotten about the party tonight, have you? Not a chance. We'll be there. I had sort of looked forward to Mother's birthday party, thought of it as a few hours escape back into the familiar, reassuring world of the past. A few hours released from the pressures and tensions and horrors of the world I was living in now. That's all right. I can fly. It's only a few feet. It's a little early for that kind of thing, Mr. Clark. Perhaps you're right. Having a good time, Lee? Oh, yes. Are you going to get a conviction, George? Off the record. It doesn't have to be off the record. Miss Howard produces some evidence I don't know about. Yes, I think we are, definitely. I guess you're lucky to have this Sims. Could have been an unsolved case without him, couldn't it? Oh, no, I don't think so. Just a meant a lot more investigation, that's all. Now, don't make poor George talk about the trial. Little you know my husband. Try and stop him. Suppose Elsner's proved innocent. It's possible, isn't it? Sure. Anything's possible. Police would simply have to start at the beginning again. Start with the people closest to young Bradley. His mother. And David here. Work out in there. Talk to everybody or anybody ever had anything to do with. Sooner or later, somebody would tell us something that would point the way. Sims probably saved us a lot of tough, dull digging, but we'd have got the murder without him. In this kind of case... Let me get you a chair, Mother. It's your birthday. You never fail to get your man. But if the killer is insane, there actually is no reason for what he's done. You end up against a blank wall. 
We were the wrong kind of people to keep such a secret, Dad said. For the first time, I realized what he meant. Oh, he could keep it all right. And I, maybe. But Mother, not a chance. Once they started questioning her, started prying, we were sunk. And they'd start soon enough if Elsner were freed. But if Elsner were convicted, that would ruin me too. So where was I? I couldn't win. Well, I was at the punch pool. And I never got too far away after that. I had to do something to drown the worry that was gnawing at my insides. Well, Cora, have you seen Lee? I saw her go into the living room. Well, there she is, by the window. Thanks. <laughs> I thought I'd lost you. David, I told you I didn't want any more punch. I'll drink it for you. You might as well. You drank the last three. Do you like books? Come with me. I don't like them that well. But these are very unusual books. Maybe I'd better scream for help. I don't need any help, darling. I'll show you books of such shapes and sizes you've never seen. The covers to match. Magnificent. Very impressive. Now let's get Wait. back. I believe this calls for routine number three. Now, under that routine, the girl sits here. And he edges in beside her. And she edges away. That's right, and he edges after. This couch isn't long enough. That's what I like about routine number three. Then when she's confronted by the necessity of crawling into the fireplace or responding to his tender embrace, he takes her in his manly arms and then with a demure glance, she twists lightly from his grasp. And with an elusive smile, she slips from his... David. Stop! I guess I should have tried routine number two. the gay sparkle stage, aren't you? Sir, attorney for the offense, father. Deponer wishes to depone. He is not as sober, perhaps, as Judge Williams. This is quite true. But not surprising, because the opponent didn't intend to be. Well, the opponent better get himself outside of about six cups of coffee real quick. And try not to let your mother see him. Six? Considerable coffee. But maybe not a bad idea with a little brandy to weaken. Look at there, Vera. Excuse me, Dad, my hostly duty. Vera, 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 you're late. You too, Morton. Well, I told her we were gonna be, but you know how women are. If he does, and nobody does. Well, thanks. Mm, must be even later than I thought. Well, there's Punch. Let me drag you to the source. Right, I'll join you in a second. I want to speak to Dr. Barnes. Well, I'll drag Vera to the source. Happy birthday, Mrs. Clark. It's a lovely party. Well, thank you, Vera. Do you two know each other? Lee, this is Vera Stone. Lee Pearson. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, my name's Clark. I, I guess you know yours. True. Currents off. <laughs> well, I promised to direct Vera to the source of the punch. Excuse me. Oh, I almost forgot. We gotta go to the kitchen. Dad thinks I should drink six cups of coffee. Sounds like a lot of coffee, but the kitchen seems like a good idea. Don't you think so? I haven't had time to think about it yet. Oh, excuse Thank you, me. <laughs> what about Morton? He'll find us. Yes, I'm afraid he will. Sly old Morton. Coffee. Plenty of coffee, unfortunately. I wonder how it'll go with punch. Some punch. Thank you. Two, please. 
We've just had the kitchen done over. You like it? Very much. New electric stove? Everything's electric, including me. Darling, I think we'd better go back in there. Oh, it's so noisy in there, and it's so quiet at your place. Don't you think so? Well, we shouldn't really, you know. Your mother will think I'm terrible. Well, aren't you? Maybe I am. Oh, but Morton. Exactly. That sly old Morton will be breathing down our necks in about two seconds, unless we do something drastic. That's right, he will. Remember, just for a little while. Sure, sure. We'll be back before anybody even knows we're gone. I'm worried about David. About his driving. Do you think he could have had an accident? No, no we would have heard. But I suppose we'd better go to bed. Yes, I suppose so. How could he do such a thing? I don't know. It was disgraceful. David. I didn't hear you drive in. Where's your car? I had a flat just down at the corner. Left it. Is Lee here? What'd she do? Martin drove her home. Did she say anything? Nothing you'd care to hear. Good morning, David. Morning. Like this, see? David, you fool. I'm a fool, all right. That was just all that was wrong with me. Don't. What? You're just wasting staples, and you make me nervous. Oh, well, yeah, I guess so. Aren't you going to court today? I suppose I might as well. If those brass knuckles don't fit, I can take them back. They have them in all sizes. They have them in silver and black enamel, too, if you'd like something a little more dressy. That won't be necessary. The need for them isn't going to come up again. I don't blame you. Hello? Yes, he is. Just a minute, please. Howard, it's for you, New Bedford calling. Hello? Yeah, this is Clark. What have you got for me? Do you know what it is? It's a detective agency in New Bedford. We had them investigate Sims back there. Thought he was too good a witness. That's excellent. No, that won't be necessary. Just send me the bill. Yeah, goodbye. Did they dig up something? He was convicted of perjury in a bank robbery case. 
Instead of being sent to prison, he was committed to a sanitarium. Spent three years there. He's insane? Child a member of the lunatic fringe. Why do people do such things? I don't know. They're lonely, I guess, or just plain crazy. Anything to attract attention. This will win your case for you. Sure, Elsner's as good as free. Almost, I'd say. He was on the stand when we adjourned yesterday. After Redmond cross-examines him, I'll put Sims back on him. When I've established this, I'll move for dismissal. Oh, dear. That means there'll be detectives here, right away, asking questions, prying, just as George said at the party. Oh, what did you expect? I know, but it seems so much more difficult now. Worse than ever. I told you I'd never let Elsner be convicted. Naturally. But what do you want me to do, suppress the evidence, deliberately lose the case? Of course you can't do that. No, of course not. It's great, and you're a miracle man, and Elsner's free. Okay, fine, but it doesn't help me any, does it? I don't have to celebrate, do I? Hello, Frank. This is Howard Clark. Will you have Elsner over to court a little early this morning? I have some news for him. Thanks. David! Don't you want some breakfast? Coffee's ready. I don't want any. All I wanted was to get away from that house. Before, my troubles had been remote in the future after the trial. Now they were right in front of me, on top of me. Even the traffic got on my nerves, though I wasn't going anywhere, just going. And when I parked my car and started walking, it was the same thing. No place to go. Nothing to do but wait for the police to come looking for me. And that would be soon enough. So I ended up at the office, which was no better than home. If only Mother had never known, but she did. I was stuck, helpless. Suddenly, without ever deciding to do it, I was on my way again. I don't know, Mr. Muir. I just got here. I'll look it up and call you back. Goodbye. Well, what are you doing here so early? I'm just leaving. Hey, Cora, how much is there in the petty cash? Why? Never mind why. How much? I think about $65, but you still owe me $15 from last week. I paid it back. I'm sorry you didn't. I told him to take it out of my check. He didn't do it. That's not my fault. $68. But, David, this cleans me out. What am I going to charge it to? You'll think of something. What are you up to now? I'm buying a rabbit farm in Australia. It's the first payment. Thanks, Cora. Good morning. Hello. Lee. I'm leaving. I... I just thought I'd say goodbye. You mean I'm not ever going to see you again? Until tomorrow? It'll be a little longer than that. Then you really are leaving town. That's right. Isn't it sort of sudden? I guess so, in a way. David, is anything the matter? Oh, no, nothing. I'm just fed up. Town, the job, law school. It's not for me. I need a change. I know how you feel. Sometimes things don't make much sense. It would be nice to be able to walk away when you're bored. I envy you. Well, good luck. Lee, come with me. You're not joking. You're crazy. Or you must think I am. Look, all we have to do is do it. Just come down and get in the car with me and drive and keep on driving, that's all. I take care of you, Lee. Such care. David, what is it? What's wrong? What's bothering you? Don't you know you can never get away from anything by running? Nothing's bothering me. I'm leaving town because I don't like it, that's all. I asked you to come with me because I want you to. I want you to very much. But I didn't ask for any pearls of wisdom or motherly advice. I just asked if you wanted to come to. Do you? Who was I kidding? By the time she was out of sight, I knew I wasn't going anywhere. Not for her reasons, but for mine. And she was it. I knew I wasn't going anyplace without her. Well, maybe I could still get by with it. 
Maybe some kind of miracle would happen in court and postpone the inevitable. Anyhow, I came to see them free Elsner from the trap that would soon close on me. By the time I got there, Dad had finished with Elsner, and Redmond had just started to cross-examine him. Mr. Elsner, I'd like to review a few points in your version of the events surrounding Aunt Bradley's murder. Now, am I to understand that although he owed you money, nevertheless, he was the one that started the argument, not you? That's right. He was drunk and trying to pick a fight. I suppose you didn't even mention the money then. Well, no, I might have asked him if he had any idea when he could pay me. That's all. I see. And you didn't threaten to beat his brains out? No. He threatened to beat my brains out. When I realized how drunk he was, all I wanted to do was get away from him. I see. You were trying to get away from him. Yet, ten minutes later, you followed him outside. No, I did not follow him outside. I didn't even know he was there. I just went outside to bring the car around so that my wife wouldn't get mud in her shoes, the way she did when we came in. You're merely going to get your car with no idea in the world where Bradley might be, and you stumbled over his body in the dark. That's right. But you didn't cry out or call anybody. No. I was scared. What good would it do? He was dead. And I knew what would happen to me if I got mixed up in it. How did you know he was dead? Well, I just, I just knew, I guess. He felt dead. I shook him. I just thought he was dead, that's all. I could see his head in a little patch of moonlight. So you simply left this murdered man alone there, brought your car around from the lot, got your wife and went home? I shouldn't have. My wife said so when I told her. But we were on the way home then. You're in a hurry to get home and wash the blood spots from your clothes? I told you we didn't know they were blood. My wife just happened to see these spots. Then we thought, well, maybe they're blood, so we washed them, that's all. Yes. You had no idea Bradley was outside. Yet you went out at exactly the right time to stumble over his body. You were completely innocent of any connection with this crime, and nobody had any reason to suspect you. Yet you sneaked away in the night to wash some spots from your clothes, blood spots which you didn't even know of blood. Mr. Elsnor, do you have any hope the jury can possibly believe this? I told you why I did it. My business is an illegal one. I was scared. I knew that if I got mixed up in it at all, just what's happening right now would happen. Why are you so eager to admit your illegal occupation? I haven't asked if you were a bookie. Objection? Overruled. Answer the question. Because it's why I acted the way I did that night. What do you expect? Wouldn't you rather tell the truth and go to jail for something you did than die for something you didn't do? Yes, perhaps I would. And perhaps I'd rather lie than go to the electric chair for murder, wouldn't you? Your Honor, I object. That's an outrageous question. Just a moment. Don't answer. I instruct the jury to disregard that question. Are you ill? No, Judge. I... Perhaps if I can have a glass of water. I yes, certainly. Feel able to go on? Would you like to lie down for a while? I don't know. I, I think it'll be all right. Perhaps just for a minute. There'll be a recess until one o'clock. Bring him into my chambers, then call a doctor, please. Don't you understand what I told you? Don't let him upset you. Stop worrying. We're going to win this case. Joe. Joe, darling. Joe. Call the doctor. Oh, Practically had a confession out of him. Well, I'm not through with him. Where's his wife? In there. Did Redmond get here yet? Somebody went after him. I think we ought to get a statement from both him and Clark. Hey, Dave. Where's your dad? Here's the DA. How about this, Mr. Redmond? What's this How about do? a statement? Did you know he had a heart condition when the trial started? It was completely unexpected, of course. I regret the manner of his death and if the trial in any way hastened it. Nevertheless, I'm sure he would have been proved guilty. And would you say that Providence had only done now what the state would have done later? 
I'll have to ask you to excuse me now. And as far as you're concerned, this winds up the question of Bradley's murder? That's right. Case is closed. There's his wife. He killed him. He killed him. Is that right? Think you could have cleared him? Is this an ironic quirk of fate? It's ironic and very tragic. He would unquestionably have been cleared. How do you think of that? Everything up to now has been just the other way. Dad, I just took a phone call for you. They said it was urgent. Who was it? Excuse me. What possible good can I do to tell them now? They'll just open the case and start them after me. You killed him. At least you know he's innocent, and we know it, even if no one else does. What a strange afternoon that was when the trial ended. Larry and Bertha were off. Just the three of us alone in the house. We were free and clear for the first time since Art's death. But another man had died to make it possible. A weird afternoon. Mother crying and not able to stop. Not crying about anything. Or else, perhaps about everything. She didn't know. It was a long time before she got herself under control. All right. All right, I should have told Redmond in the first place. I know that now, but I can't go back and do it over, can I? Of course not. There's no use sitting here brooding. It's driving me crazy. I'm going out. What about Donald? He knows about Sims, doesn't he? If we just do nothing, won't he suspect? He wasn't at court this morning. But he knows you investigated Sims, doesn't he? Seemed like such a wild chance, I didn't tell him. We we're in luck. Oh. No, thanks. It tortures you, doesn't it? Not being able to clear Elsner's name. That's part of it, of course, but it's too late to do anything about that now. I got David into this mess. I can't just abandon him. You got him into it? We did. Mostly me. We made him the kind of person he is. What did we do? Just because we gave him all the advantages we could afford? Helped him as much as we could? Why shouldn't we? We never gave him a chance to grow up. We kept everything unpleasant away from him. He never had to suffer for any of his mistakes. We made him into a thoughtless, irresponsible boy, not a man. Darling, you're upset now. It isn't as bad as all that. He'll be different now, I'm sure we all will. And Elsner won't be quite as dead, perhaps. Quick trip. I'm a fast man. What's this? You want me to drop you someplace? I want to talk to you. Go ahead. Well, not here. This will take a little while. How about dinner? Sorry, I've got too much to do tonight. Well, this is very important. Please, I'll take you any place you say. Just name it. Well, we might try the Emerald Room. The Emerald Room? Where's that? It's out near my house. I'll show you. It's tragic about Mr. Elsnor, wasn't it? I bet your father would have cleared him, too. I bet he would. The Emerald Room, huh? Yes. Are you impressed? I guess we were lucky to get the table without a reservation. Hello, Miss Pearson. How are you? Hello, Charlie. Well, what are you going to have tonight? Well, I... Hi, Marvin. What's for you? Mom wants a pint of potato salad. Okay, Mom will get it. You're sure this is where you want to have dinner? Positive. I've got to get home early and wash my hair. Two toasted ham and cheese and two milks. Okay, coming right up. Well, suppose I don't want a ham and cheese sandwich. Oh, you'll love it. It's a specialty of the house. This isn't exactly what I had in mind. Well? Well, I have to kind of lead up to this. 
Because everything's so different from this morning. At least I see things differently. I guess I started that night in the backyard when you told me a few home truths. I thought I wasn't paying any attention, but something must have registered because it's been coming back at me ever since. Excuse me. Uh, the sandwiches will be ready any minute. Fine, Charlie. Uh, you said everything I had was just handed to me. There was always somebody else to pay for it if I made a mistake. Well, that was true. It was none of my business. Uh, let some people pay for things I wish I hadn't now. I was too fresh. No, you were right. You see, that's the thing. You were right about my whole attitude. It's no good, no good at all. David, what are you driving at? I'm trying to tell you that I'm a changed character. Why should you explain anything to me? Because I want you to marry me. David, you must be crazy. This morning you... I don't mean now. I want to tell you now, but I, I didn't expect you to say yes or anything. If only you won't say no. In a little while, maybe, or, or however long you want, you can see if I really have changed. But I guess there still wouldn't be much reason for you to marry me even then. Even if I do everything I mean to. But now, now there's none at all. None at all. Except that I love you. I'll bet you folks thought I was never going to get here. <laughs> the sandwiches are coming right up. You absolutely beyond any question have to go right in. I still have to wash my hair. Besides, I'll see you in the morning, you know. It's not near soon enough. You want me to put this in the garage? <laughs> this is the garage. Okay. How will you get home? Float. Silly. Not me. You're the silly one. You're taking an awful chance, you know. Maybe. But I don't think so. I think I've always known the kind of guy you really are inside. It's just that you didn't know it, I guess. But now you do. And at least you've always been honest. You've never tried to pass for something you aren't. You've never tried to hide anything. What's the matter? Nothing. I... Should have kept my mouth shut, I guess. Good night, darling. Here. Engagement present. suddenly knew I'd never be able to face life with her on this kind of a false basis. I'd started living another big lie that had to be wiped out right then and there. Well, I still had the guts to do it. Other people get to wash their hair. It looks like fate is against me. Whatever you want now, the answer is no. Lee, we can't do it. I can't marry you. Forget it. You'll have to forget it because I killed Art. You see, I killed him. Oh, David. Now I understand what's been the matter with you. Everything. This morning I didn't leave town because I didn't want to lose you. So now I do anyway. I just can't hide anymore, Lee. Lose me. You were asleep. Too loud? No. Oh, that trap girl's right. How's mother? She's better. She's sleeping. But you're not. Do you mind? Hmm. Have you thought about what you want to do now? You want to go back to school or what? 
Would you like to take a trip somewhere, get this out of your system? Go to Europe or South America for a couple of months? No, thanks. I'm going to see Redmond first thing in the morning. What decided you? Nothing. Everything. I just suddenly knew I had to do it. So I'm going to, that's all. Say something silly. Why not? It doesn't cost any extra. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm a noble character. Are you sure you don't want me to stay? I'm sure. And you'll phone me as soon as you know anything. Of course I will. Good morning, Mr. Clark. Good morning. Is Mr. Redmond here? No, he's not yet, but it shouldn't be long. You want to wait? Thank you. Care to see the newspaper? David, you're up before breakfast, aren't you? Sir, if you have a minute, I... Sure, sure. Come on in. Morning, boss. Morning. 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 Uh, Mr. Redmond, you want to do anything about this? Thank you. I'll take care of it. Thanks. How's your dad this morning? All right. yet. It looks like about two years, maybe less. Two years? It'll pass. Of course it will. Funny thing. Here I am, headed for the penitentiary. For the first time since Art's death, I, I feel kind of peaceful inside. Kind of good. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. Thank you. 